everybody. Today I'm here to film a guide to adult fiction. So I have been reading a lot more adult fiction despite what my background says. It's all like YA. I changed my background to more adult books because I'm reading more adult books. Anyway, I've been reading a lot more adult fiction, especially um, over these past couple years, and I find myself reading more and more of it. So I thought, why not film a video telling you guys like a like an impromptu guide or, you know, if you are a primarily YA reader and you want to read a little bit more adult fiction or want to test the waters, I thought I would recommend you some books to help you guide into that because I'm still very new to the genre. I'm not an expert by any means. Um, but I thought I would just share with you some of my favorite adult books and what I would recommend for each particular genre there is. So with this video, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of different genres like sci-fi, fantasy, chick lit, contemporary, literary fiction, um, mysteries, all of those. If you're a fan of those particular genres within the YA, I'm going to give you two recommendations of adult books I think that you would like. These books I picking, these books that I picked for this video in particular I think are just e books that anybody can read obviously but more particularly why readers I think could venture into adult waters with if that makes any sense. This is like you're kind of you know I guess you're um, adult books for YA readers or a guide to adult fiction in case you're interested in getting into the genre. So without further ado, because I know it's going to be a long video, let's get into it. So the first genre I want to talk about is chiclet. So chiclet in adult terms, I would just classify it as like a chick flick. You have an essential funny romantic movie that just gives you all the feelings. I would say if you're a big fan of like Casey West books or Morgan Matson books or anything that's really fluffy and contemporary that makes you, you know, have a little hard eyes emoji and things like that, I think it is a great way to venture into adult fiction. So the two I'd recommend for that, number one is Sophie Kinsella. I love Sophie Kinsella. She's my favorite chocolate author of all time. My favorite book by her is I've Got Your Number. It's a very funny, you know, romantic, huge read that I think YA readers would love. And the other one I want to recommend to you is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. Again, another cute romantic read. Both of these could be honestly chick flicks. I will say The Hating Game does have some steamy scenes into it. So of course, because we are venturing more into adult fiction in this video, that a lot of these books are obviously going to have adult content, whether that be sexual scenes or other scenes that are a little bit more graphic or, you know, more grown up, I guess you could say, technically, but just know that going on further in this video. But either way, if you love like fluffy contemporary romantic YA books, I would highly recommend these. Way to transition your way into adult chiclet books. The next genre is sci-fi. I don't read a ton of young adult sci-fi, nor do I read a ton of adult sci-fi, but I have read a few. So if you're a fan of YA sci-fi and you really want to try something different, the one book I always recommend to everyone is Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. I say this is almost kind of like a YA book because you're following a protagonist that is 17 years old, so that's technically like young adult, like age standards, but it's such an easy book to get into. It's all about virtual reality and it's also about a game within this virtual reality and a scavenger hunt. It has chalk. It's full of 80s references and things like that. It is a perfect book if you're interested in YA sci-fi and transitioning to adult sci-fi. I would highly recommend this. Also, the movie's coming out very, very soon in case you want to read the book before you see the movie, which I always recommend you do. Speaking of booked at movies as well, I'm also going to talk about The Martian by Andy Weir. This is another adult sci-fi book that I read a few years ago and I really enjoyed it. The the main appeal to this book is the main character, Mark Watney. He is very, very hilarious. He makes the book so much worthwhile. It's one of my favorite books of all time. There is a lot of scientific jargon in it. Like there's going to be things you're going to be like that are way over your head, not unless like you are really invested in NASA and space which I don't know much about, so you're going to be really confused. But Mark Wachney explains it, and you really just care for his character, and it's just a hilarious sci-fi. Both of these kind of venture on, like, the funny type of sci-fi, I guess you could say. But if you're interested in why sci-fi, I would highly recommend checking these out. Moving on to the mystery genre. To be honest with you, I haven't read a YA mystery book that I've enjoyed. I just tend to not like the young adult mystery books. I don't know why, that's just me. However, I am a huge fan of adult mystery novels. I've not read a ton, but I've read a fair few, and I have some of my favorites. So, <laughs> so in case you're wondering, you know, to amp up the mystery more, amp up the thrill factor, whatever you want to call it, I would recommend The Wife Between Us by Gear Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. I really enjoyed this one. This one kept me guessing. The ending was kind of not the best, but I think it's a great transition book. Like, I 
would have loved this if it was my first ever mystery book. My first ever adult mystery book was The Girl on the Train, which I do recommend. I like that one. Not a lot of people like it. But this one, I think, is just a, it's not too scary, because I don't read mysteries where it's super scary. Um, but it still keeps you guessing and keeps you really engaged. And the other one I want to recommend, I don't know if I would call this mystery, Little Lies by Elaine Moriarty. I'm sure you've heard of this. It was made into an HBO miniseries. It is, it does have a mystery element to the whole thing. There's a big mystery in the background of this whole book, but it focuses on three female friendships and how they just grow together and learn and how all, they're all dealing with different things. But there is a mystery element in the background, so I would probably ca classify this as mystery. So I think either way, if you're interested in mystery, check this one out. And if you're interested in kind of just fiction and women's fiction at that, I would highly recommend this one. This is my favorite book by this author, and it's just so good. And also, what, read it before you watch the show. The show does change a lot. Of things but the book is just so so good in case you're wanting something a little bit more scary which like i said i don't read a ton i'd recommend to you final girls by riley sager this is the takes on the trope of the last woman standing on um, the horror movie there's always one woman left and this is kind of going on the trope of that it is it's not super scary it gets in your head i will say I'll be honest with you, it was scary for me because I'm the biggest chicken ever, but I really enjoyed the writing and the overall plot of this whole book. I would highly recommend it if you want to test the waters with how scary you like your books. Like I said, I'm not good with that, but I still really enjoyed this and one. Into fantasy. I do read a ton of YA fantasy. However, I don't read a lot of adult fantasy. That is one genre I am really, really brand spanking new to. So if you have any recommendations for me, please let me know. And I think the reason I haven't read a ton of it is because some of the adult fantasy series are like, they're big, like they're like huge books that just daunt me just even looking at them. So the two I'm recommending to you today are both by the same author because they're the only two fantasy adult books I've read. But I still really like them. The first one is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I say this is one of the perfect if not the most perfect book for if you want to transition into like YA fantasy, if you want to transition from YA fantasy to adult fantasy. It's such an easy read and she's already, this author already writes a ton of young adult fiction under a different name, Victoria Schwab. So you're already familiar with her writing and how she flows. So it's very an easy transition from one genre to the next genre. This one's great. It's about two guys that um, pretty much give themselves superpowers and it's like an anti-hero. It is very gritty and dark, but again, this author is known for that but I highly recommend this book if you're interested in testing out the waters with adult fiction it is awesome the darker shade of magic trilogy this is this does have three books in it and this is so interesting another great adult fantasy series the only one that I've actually read in its entirety it's about this it's about London and how it has this parallel universes. I mean, you follow a character that can travel through these different Londons. And it's very, very interesting. The characters, the whole plot is gripping. The characters are amazing. Like I said, if you've already read some of her other books in the young adult genre, I think it's very, very easy to cross over into adult books and read her adult fiction. I think it's a great start. I think it's a great start to adult fantasy. At least it is for me because I haven't read any other adult fantasy books. Moving into literary fiction, which is, I think, I think one of my favorite genres than adult, I think you just call it fiction. I don't know. There's so many different genres. It's ridiculous. But I've noticed that I really tend to like the quirky ones. That's just how I am personally. I had to really narrow down to three books. I couldn't pick two in this one. I had to pick three that I think are just great books to transition from YA to um, adult books. And the first one is A Man Called Uva by Frederick Bachman. I read this book a few years ago. I thought it was great. It's an older man and he's very kind of cranky. His wife had passed away a few a while ago and he's just really kind of buying his time and he also and he honestly wants to commit suicide because he doesn't feel like this life has anything else to offer him because his wife's not here anymore. And then he meets new neighbors and then his world expands a lot more and you just really fall in love with this character. You learn more about him. It's like a place in Sweden which I really enjoyed as well. You get to learn more about the country and about how their culture are and things like that. I love this book. It's the quid it's really quirky. Um, he's got a really great way of writing that you fall in love with Uva and you just, it's really great. I have another quirky book. I have Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine by Gail Honeyman. I read this a few months ago and I 
fell in love with it. Eleanor is also a very quirky character. She's very antisocial and she has a lot of baggage in her past. A lot of things that you don't know about her. Read the book, the more you learn about Eleanor and how she's opening up to the world and meeting new people and things like that. This is a great heartwarming story. The books that when you finish them, it gives you a really sense of calm and just happiness inside of you because you've read a character's art completely and you just feel happy for them and you can close the book knowing that all is right in their world, if you get what I'm saying. So Eleanor Oliphant is just amazing. It gives you all the heartwarming feelings. You get to see something, you get to see somebody grow and mature and you get to learn more about them. I highly recommend this one. So great. It does take a little bit to get inside Eleanor's head because she's very, you know, different from the rest of us, like all of us are, but it just does take a little bit to start off with. And the last literary fiction book I want to recommend is Little Fires Ever by Celeste Ng. This book is a powerhouse. It's also becoming a movie very, very soon. A lot of books, a lot of these books are probably. This one follows two families in the suburb, in the suburban of Shaker Heights, Ohio. We have one family that kind of has it all together. They have several kids, and we follow the wife and how she's dealing with things and how she has a picture perfect world. And then we have a new neighbor come in in this neighborhood, and she has a daughter, and she's a single mother, and they're very, very different from this other family. And it's all about them melding together. Their kids start hanging out with one another, and you know, secrets get untangled, secrets get learned and things like that. Celeste Ng has a beautiful way of writing a story. She just weaves everything so great together. It's like, it's just, you feel like you know these characters and you feel like you have the same struggles and you just really, you know, she has a great way of like having an underlying message within all of her books, which I really enjoy. I highly recommend this book for a great transition book. I thought it was amazing, especially if you're like into neighborhood type of, I wouldn't say drama books, but just more exploration of people and why they are the way they are and what makes f every family different. And you know, there's also a lot of, you know, diversity and culture things in this book as well that are very, very important. And the last genre is historical fiction, which I don't read a lot of either YA books or adult books, but I only have one for this one, and that is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. I read this book last month. I fell in love with it. It's my like new favorite book of the entire year. This book does look daunting. Tell me that doesn't look daunting to you. It was to me. Um, but I flew through it and I think you will too. Historical fiction is very tough for me to read. I just don't have a pull towards it. I don't have a desire to read a ton of it. Also not a fan of historical fiction either. I would still recommend The Nightingale. The Nightingale is all about World War II in France and we follow two sisters that are leading very very different paths during the war. One is a mother and her husband has gone off to the war and the other sister is just fighting the war. She's like smuggling soldiers into Spain and things like that. It's a very very intense, very gripping, very harrowing novel that is for sure but it is amazing so if you're not a fan of historical fiction I would still recommend giving this a shot it's really amazing you will fall in love with it it'll make you cry and it's amazing so those are all the recommendations I have for you guys if you're interested in venturing into the adult fiction world like I said I'm still very very new to the genre I read a lot of YA books which I still do enjoy a lot of but I'm, as time goes on and as I grow older which I am um, I find myself gravitating more towards adult fiction. So I thought this video would be great for anyone that, you know, is interested in delving into the waters of adult books, but just doesn't know where to start. So I hope this video helped you guys. But um, if you have any recommendations for any, you know, books that you think are great transition books from YA to adult, I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next one.